there's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. <laughs> Today, Charlie Esser lights some candles and sets up a shrine, praying for the return of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Little Hellfire, big faux pas, wearing a Marvel shirt to episode 52 of Capes and Lunatics. Capes and Lunatics, episode 52, starts right now. Black Panther, greater than whatever's going on in DC right now, sorry. I thought you were, I thought you were in the bag for DC, so you're saying Black Panther better than Batman, uh, at this current point, with a uh, freaking three ninety nine price point, nothing is two ninety nine. Yeah, and no code. Marvel, 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 Marvel's all three ninety nine. Marvel's all three ninety nine, but they give you codes. Yeah, exactly. No codes, no nothing, no extra content. Like to, to be fair, Marvel has properties that make money. Well, so do DC. I don't know why they raised the prices. They actually uh, um, have been beating Marvel in the comic book. For in price. the comic books. In the comic yeah, books. In the comic, comic books. books don't make money. Comic books don't make money, Willis. Comic books are. Uh, well, comic books are what we, well, comic books are what we do. They make more the money than the business. book industry, I'll tell you. The regular book industry, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, <laughs> but well, those are what we call in the marketing industry a loss leader. So, so for 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 Disney, comic books are a loss leader. They know they're going to lose money on the comic books. That's fine. They're not. They want to sell comic books, not because oh, we got to make money on the comic books. They're like. Dude, we want to make money on the things that come out of comic books. Because it has a whole TV industry, which they're doing fine. Don't, don't well, you worry about it. They're, they're making yeah, money. Yeah. Just not at the movies right now. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is fine. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll take your word for that. Um, I don't know how you much money TV makes. You ma- can Google it, it's fine. I, well, no, I don't know how much money TV makes anymore. It makes a lot. <laughs> movies, movies are you have to still pay to see. Well, not Lilith, of course, but you, most of us you still have to pay to see a movie. Well, TV and, uh, makes its money in its own ways and merchandise and those things. It's and there's a reason why movie actors are now clamoring to be TV when it used to be in the reverse. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. Well, because, well, be, honestly, it's because people have realized you don't have to make a million dollars. You just have to be happy with what you do. And TV. Well, you, you can be like friends and make a million dollars an episode. Well, yeah, that's good too. But, you know. <laughs> or you, but then you also have to do friends, which is its own special heck as an actor. <laughs> so true. So it was, true. It, you know, I loved friends. Wasn't that you, David Schwimmer? <laughs> yeah, Who? please. I call names. Hey, hey, I call names. Hey, don't make fun of David Schwimmer. His, hard's li- his life is hard now, mopping up that bathroom at uh, Burger King. Come on. <laughs> no, he's got friends. Oh, no, he's, he's fine. Don't I just know. Him in yeah. movie. Don't you just have David Schwimmer. He, he, made he saved money, his yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. Oh no no. They, they well except for Matthew Perry who put it all into amphetamines, you know. <laughs> no, Matthew he Perry is a like, like 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 you know. Yeah. Just, well someone brings it because he's a very likable guy. He said, uh, what was it? Something 60 Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> he's Matthew. good in everything he does. He's a very, he, you know what? He is a modern day Matthew, not Matthew Broderick. He's a, yeah, Matthew Broderick. He's kind of a modern day Matthew Broderick because he's actually a modern day Morton Downey Jr. Not Morton Downey Jr., Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very bad filing system in my head, and all the Downey Juniors are filing. You got to clean out that memory palace, Charlie. <laughs> you can't. That's, the thing it's like you wind up like deadpool doing that um issue 300 um, but no uh no robert downey jr of course very likable actor always could get work had a huge drug problem kept on getting in the way of him being a big star you know what in like 10 years maybe only five years at this point because it was 20 years ago that friends was on you know matthew perry is going to get that big role and he's going to make his comeback once he gets himself clean and stays clean. You know, you have to get clean and stay clean. That's the trick. Robert Downey Jr.'s trick, he is like one of these weird herbal medicine guys now. So he's like doing all these kinds of shot. No, no, not that kind of herb. Like, but like, you know, you know, the ones that don't do anything to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> you know, like that holistic, you know, this water was once touched by, you know. Oh, listen iron. to the vegetarian over there. Ugh. I'm not a vegetarian. I eat meat. I just don't no, do the gluten and processed sugar and 
All she does, all she is, is paleo, and yeah, you know, because exaggeration, love. It's okay. <laughs> but no, but no. anyway, but no, but, but, don't don't get the vegans on me. <laughs> but no, but he has replaced his addiction, one one addiction next- that was bad for a new addiction that is simply annoying. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yet to be determined. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's not bad for him. It's it it, it probably doesn't so help. Probably him. for that pocketbook. What's that South Park episode about the Native American medicine? <laughs> I know, yeah, but you know what? what? Reminds me of. N- not for nothing. He can afford it. <laughs> True. It's still cheaper than cocaine. Oh, which, which is at a premium in these in this day and age, you know. I don't know, man. Everybody's on the op- 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 opioids. Look at Kanye. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe everybody <laughs> should go back to cocaine. At okay, least, like, you know TV what? Was fun. Scoop it up. I remember opium, opium's very, but it's the hipsters and they're ooh, opioids. That's like opium. That's so old school and steampunk. Like, no, it's a different thing the that doctors are pushing it because they have it, they're, they're, they get an incentive to push it. It's not the hipsters, it's the doctors. Yeah. Okay? Well, <laughs> no, but you know, it's, well, you know, it's like music. Every so often music will speed up and then it'll slow down and it's all the same music, but rock music will get faster and then it'll get slower you'll get you know punk and then you'll get grunge you know you get speed metal and then you'll get uh murder core you know i don't know what murder core <laughs> is but i'm just assuming it's slower than speed metal metal because it doesn't have the word speed in its name I do like speed metal though <laughs> yeah very good stuff I-, I like when you can't differentiate where the notes come that's just like when music almost sounds like static that's where i like it white noise philip are you gonna grab the reins or what oh not again uh <laughs> but anyway, does. all right it's, it's, it's episode 52 and in honor of that i literally watched supergirl i watched flash i watched arrow oh, oh. and i watched Batman, man rest in peace and lucifer man rest in peace as hey well. hey they haven't made an announcement on gotham yet um it, it's out it's out not? So it's what? like a ten percent chance that it's in. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's not owned by the studio. Like that's that's everybody's thing now. Oh, we don't own it. We're not making enough money on it. Out. That's so, what happened at ABC. That's what happened at Fox with a lot of the other shows too, as well. Brooklyn Nine Nine Nine. Well, well then, why didn't they announce Gotham's gone when it when they announced everything else is gone at Fox? Uh, Lucifer, like you said, yeah. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Last. Well, they're they're waiting on whether or not they're going to pick up Lethal Weapon because I guess somebody left. Like I don't watch that show, but somebody left and they got a new star and they're trying to see the response to it at the upfronts. Oh. I guess they have one on up front on the 18th or something, 17th or the 18th for Fox. I forget what, which, which, which day it is. But so, yeah, that's what they're waiting on. So it's going to either be Lethal Weapon or Gotham, but not both. Uh, but I definitely think that they, they have a better chance at Lethal Weapon than they do at Gotham because Warner Brothers TV, television studios is just I just really wonder, hard to work with. I just wondered anyway if they were going to get rid of if Fox was going to get rid of Gotham just because of the deal going through and maybe then they could put Gotham on that digital thing. Yeah, they're really tr- well. I, this is the thing that has me kind of nervous because, um, twenty first century is only renewing things that like are basically in house for like ninety six percent of the time that the things that they're renewing. So it's just like, but if it goes, the deal goes through, technically Disney won't own all that stuff. So it's just this deal is really weird, and I I I don't know what the things that are the machinations that are going on with the TV networks. It makes me really kind of skeptical well, at this you know, point. Well, it's, it's all about consolidation. Although Brooklyn Nine-Nine went over to NBC, NBC, which if Comcast buys Fox, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's, Comcast, it's a crazy out in this TV landscape well, right because now. Because basically you've never had a major network just say, we're done. Fox getting out of TV is like the weirdest thing to ever happen. Because it's you like it's just the day it created itself. <laughs> that was weird too. No, 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 well, no. People just saying, "I'm gonna make a network. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put it on the barn and have uh, my my mom can sit, can 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 sew the curtains and <laughs> put on a show like Andy Rooney. It'll be great. Not Andy Rooney, Mickey Rooney. Andy, uh, I forget the that character. filing system. Get it together, Charlie. <laughs> Don't you hate when you can't remember the war- the right names of which celebrity you're talking about? Anyway, I- I'm not hating on anyone, but I'm just saying. Um, no, I have a bad filing system. I-, I I admit that celebrity names. I'm very bad. You know, Morgan Fairchild, Morgan Freeman. Who knows? <laughs> they were one of them was in a movie. One has a deep voice. Don't ask me to say which one is which. Uh, <laughs> 
You know what? I'd pay for it to see a movie with Morgan, <laughs> Morgan Fairchild and Morgan Freeman. Get Morgan Freeman to read some Morgan Fairchild lines. <laughs> I think actually, honestly, that is a buddy comedy that writes itself. Morgan Fairchild and Morgan, and not for nothing, they're actually you know of comparable ages. They are. You know, they're both like nineteen seventies people that have grown you up know, in the. Kind of think right? about it. What well, hasn't the CW courted Morgan Fairchild? I mean, they they like their older soap opera stars. Actually, is mm-hmm. the thing that they do. So, I mean, they brought back Grant Show for Dynasty, okay. even though that show is canceled. <laughs> <sighs> We still need an Agatha Harkness. He's still going out. I want Agatha Harkness in the MCU. That's so is, all I'm saying. So is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. going to survive? Uh, I definitely yes. think so. Yeah. yeah. Aren't they making a big deal about Captain Marvel and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something like that? Or the, the main villain in Captain Marvel's? I definitely think they're still Well, they're still, they're, well they've that. been talking about the Kree, and there's like one episode left, so. Yeah, well, the, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Here, here's what I'll say. They went into this season... With this idea that, you know what? It might be the last. This might be the last. And they were very upfront about that. This may be our last season. We don't know what to do, but we're just going to put it all on the table. And at the end of the season, all of a sudden, all of the producers are like, yeah, man, I can't wait for the next season. And we're thinking about this and that and the other. So what I think happened is they're sitting there and they're saying, you know what? Regardless of anything else, uh, we've proved ourselves to our Disney overlords. So even if even if ABC says, you know what? Have a nice day. You know, where we'll they be. They still have a streaming service. It can go exactly. on Hulu. There's other things. It yeah, doesn't have to be on ABC. They're going to be somewhere, and and they're going to be fine. You know, uh, and yeah. I think that's what they think. And they might even know, put it on Freeform. God knows Freeform needs it. Yeah, well, you know, they can time the Cloak and Dagger. I'm so excited about Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, it's like June. Was it June seventh? I think. Yeah. Yes, it's going to make me find that channel on my TV. Me I know too. it exists because it's all alph- alphabetical. And I'm going to find that channel. I'm going to watch it. F, Charlie. Yes, I know because it's alphabetical. I know the alphabet. <laughs> well, you don't even know the alphabet. It's sound with a P. You're ruining it all, Phil. I don't know where to file you. This is why my filing system so messed up. Because Phil should be an F, and he's over in P, and everybody, it's chaos up there. Why is the fouling system messed up? Because it got flooded. Uh, but I mean, no, yeah. I, yeah, I, so, the Shield, I hear it's good, it's and I, I definitely think they're going to keep it around. It's it's an asset, whether, whether it makes money or not, it's still an asset. It's, yeah, it's like an hour-long commercial, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But, um... But it, uh, you, well, Charlie was saying how all the producers, everything were like, oh, next season, next season. Well, Gotham, they keep saying, you know, next season, we're going to do No Man's Land. Well, I mean, I guess they have the backup contingency plan that if they do get canceled, obviously it might go on the streaming service, DC yeah, Universe. Probably. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe that was whispered to them. So they just feel free to go balls to the wall. Unless they, and, unless, yeah. yeah. I mean, unless the, if they're thinking, you know, Metropolis is going to be on that digital thing so hey God, it's a perfect God, companion God. piece yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just don't let it cross over although bruno healer is the executive producer and showrunner for that show as well i will put daniel logan anything i want <laughs> daniel Logue on the mean streets of metropolis i like donald Logan. oh whatever his name is Logue. <laughs> the guy from grounded <laughs> for life yes thank you but no more importantly from the fx show tears which was canceled and gone too soon which is excellent and find it he'll always be grounded to, grounded for life for me so yeah you know i, I love the yeah, dad that life was in that man. show with um patrick War- warburton and i'm like hey where, where, where's your real husband <laughs> hey if you could trade up to patrick warburton Patrick Warburton is a national treasure. I will not have his good name besmirched. I, I agree, but like that, I love that show so much. I know. <laughs> my brother was such a does bucket. He is everywhere. I mean, he does that hologram thing on Agents of Shield, Charlie. That's yeah. funny. I was watching. I, I was watching a Disney Junior cartoon with Luca the one day. He was like, he was doing the voice of a talking dog. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> yeah, he's he's everywhere. Got, he's everywhere because he's got. Well, his friend. mother hates Family Guy, so he has to do all these other things that she might like. <laughs> family Guy does. It's it's not a good show. So <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Well, it's I mean, a pretty good show from season you know, eight. It's, you know what? Family Guy is the kind of show that you get mad at yourself for enjoying when it is good. It, it's like oh, every so often though. What's the world when Family Guy's a good show? Miss American Dad over there. It's a better show. Okay, it is yep. a better show than Family Guy. It really is. American <laughs> Dad is a better show than Family Guy. Um, 
American Dad. What I'll say the differentiation between American Dad and Family Guy is from my from my perspective. Don't get no damn Conway and Twitty cutaways, okay? <laughs> Well, well, yeah. What I was going to say is that American Dad, I think, knows who it is as a show and so plays within its universe in a better way than I think Family Guy, which I think is more... Obama becoming president is the best thing that ever passion. happened to American Dad because they could let go of the, the W jokes. I'll just put it to you. That, <laughs> that was the first three or four seasons is just like, oh, you just sludge through it. And then like season five, Boom! It just becomes this this own show of itself, and it's yeah. great. Yeah. Anyway, I I enjoy American Dad. Um, you know, even but, though you, you know, didn't know it was still on last week, it's okay. You can enjoy the reruns. You know what? Well, who knows what shows are on anymore and what shows are just in reruns? Because everything after a certain no, point, no, has a handy handy app. Every channel, <laughs> all the time. You know, it's like all right now I can turn on The Simpsons. Right now, because it's like always playing on one of the FX channels, and they'll just have like hours of The Simpsons. And I have no idea. Honestly, Simpsons could have been canceled five years ago. I would have no idea. <laughs> Unless you tune in to watch a show at a specific date and time, you have no idea that if it's on or not not anymore. Um, so is The Simpsons going to be like a Saturday, Saturday night? Yeah. Where it would just go forever. Yeah, it, it is. No, actually, I think they have a deal until it's either 2020 or 2020. I think it's 2024 or 2022. Something like that, where they're pretty much, I'm pretty sure that's when they're going to end the show. Well, 2020 is going to be, isn't that going to be like 30 years? Yeah. But yeah, I think they I'm had it like for a couple of more or something. Yeah, if, like everybody if, if, wanted if, to do it's it. It's already beaten Gunsmoke. It's the longest running show. Yeah, they show. made a joke about it in the last episode. Where yeah. he almost shot the baby in the in the couch gag. Nah. I was like, I know that I get that reference. Yes. But no, it's you know <laughs> that in the history book. Yes. Well No, my my dad loved Gunsmoke. He loved oh, yeah. Don Wayne. And not for nothing, you know, if you watch me TV, you see all these shows from the past are still on the air, you know. I wouldn't know that Gunsmoke was canceled if it wasn't for the fact that I actually know that it's canceled. Because I turn on the TV, oh, it's Gunsmoke's on, you know? That is some low... If you're watching Andy stuff. knows who Barney Fife is. MeTV, I got my antenna to get in MeTV. And I have to let the internet rest every now and, now and again. That's the downside to the wi- all Wi-Fi all the time through the internet thing. You know, now, now that we have a one a one-service family... All hail AT and T! You kids and your damn technology. Yes. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you this: it's more affordable to be all on one on one. Though I do recognize that there is that downside of it. That you know, um, actually, that's because like AT and T doesn't make its own hardware. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest problem because I'm sure if AT and T made a little Fire Stick, I would I would be able to watch on demand programming. That's why that the Amazon doesn't like the on demand. <laughs> I don't know why, but anytime I try to go to DirecTV now for on-demand programming like Big Bang Theory or it does have the first episode of this season of The Good Place on on on-demand in that conversation, but it can't play it, but my phone will play it. So I can watch it on my phone. I can watch it on Android. I can't watch it on the Amazon. So I think it's Amazon that's the sticky wicket. I think Amazon's, and I said this when I was having my rant about Sci-Fi Channel, and that you know don't worry about net neutrality it's about device neutrality hmm. that is where they're going to get you, nope. you don't need to nope. worry about net neutrality no nope. unless okay. everybody runs on android that's the only way mm-hmm. or ios no, no, no it's, one's it's on not iOS. easy to play with as somebody who's made apps yeah it's easy because you only have to make it for like three phones but the, <laughs> the proprietary system is just it's a freaking nightmare yeah oh it's a freaking nightmare Nobody likes Apple, Phil. No, a lot of people like Apple, but I mean, I'm not going to hate on Apple. Apple's doing its thing, but like as somebody who does other things, like tech-wise, I don't like messing around in their operating system. It's just not my thing. Oh, but Charlie, remember last night we were talking, I said I would give uh, Rick and Morty a try? Yes. I went on Netflix. It wasn't on Netflix. Of course it's not. I said, oh. Oh, Oh. Oh. Well, this fool told me it was on Netflix because I looked. Well, I don't it. know where it's on. I I, I just have the TV. Oh, the TV puts it on TV. Yeah, Adult Adult Swim on demand. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah, Do you right. have that? I was looking on demand. I didn't think I saw it, but unless it might be on the Cartoon Network, but sometimes it, it just depends on what cable operator yeah. you have. Okay. Um, they split okay. it. 
look on the anyway. TV. Okay. Okay, so I read my comic book, and you couldn't you couldn't be bothered to look for two other apps to look for or Google Rick and Morty. I was I looking. At, I understand, Phil. Sometimes it's too much work to actually look for what's what's out there. Well, one, Agents of Shield came on. I think you'll appreciate that. Then I watched Agents of Shield, and two, I was editing your words of wisdom from last night. So okay, well, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so you, so never, you, you, you never retweet. You haven't retweeted me. I've been, I've been good. I actually retweeted retweet the whole episode. I haven't been looking at Twitter as I've been oh, watching. Okay. I've been concentrating so that's the it. episode, Charlie. Yes, sir. Boo! Who does that, Phil? You're old. You put the times. You know how many no. years. But you I have to. So, I have to soak in the greatness that is. Um, Adrian oh, Asdar's oh. Graviton. Okay. And that let me let me say that was like the best thing ever because did you did you catch the subtle reference at the very start of the episode to my favorite show from the eighties, Sledgehammer? Oh, I don't think I even okay. know what that is. <laughs> Make me sad. <laughs> Speaking of eighty shows, so a, a great greatest American hero got a pass. By the way, like they're not making it. A... Yeah. Yeah. That's well, about it. You know why? Because nobody. Uh, I don't was, know why people are, are so upset about the greatest American heroine. That was the original. Well, it wasn't even that. I think. I think it was the actress that they were. Oh really. well, that happens. I, I mean, supposedly everybody loves New Girl, but I can't. I can't watch that show ever since um the Wayne's that I left in the first episode. So. Wait, is that a, is it the adorable girl was going to be the? No, no, no. It was her heroine? friend, the the Indian American oh. woman. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't watch New Girl anyway. And, Me neither. And, I, I saw one episode. The adorable girl whose name I actually don't even know. I just, Zoe Deschanel. Zoe Deschanel. I just know that she's supposed to be adorable. She's uh, a manic pixie dream girl. I thought Charlie. Yeah. Was like, I, I, I thought little Charlie little was gonna be like, I've seen that. that show. I love Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> the Mary Tyler Moore show was a great show, and she was adorable in her own way as well. The original adorable, but yes, in a more grown womanish way. <laughs> But but Lilith, did you see the Big Bang that, season finale? That, that's not Mary. I Tyler. haven't. I haven't. I'm gonna watch it actually after <laughs> we get off. Okay. Yeah, you both should go see because I watched it last night. I said yeah, just. Mary just, just short. Short. <laughs> I told I told Char- Charlie just for the just for who uh, actually uh, bumps Will Wheaton to uh, Mary Sheldon and Amy. Is it yeah. is it his brother? Just it's okay. No 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 no. Culture icon. Wait a minute, okay. I just realized, does this mean we don't get a Stand By Me joke with Will Wheaton and, um, uh... No. They, they and, were both uh, there, but I don't think, I don't think oh. they were even seated next to each other. But, yeah, no Stand but, By Me jokes, no. At no point did they say, I'll stand by you, or no. you stand by him, I don't, or... I don't think the two of them had any interaction at all, no. Do you think there's tension there? Wait, are the Big Bang Theory of writers old enough to even know the movie Stand By Me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I know know they're probably all white guys in the writers' room, but I don't know their ages. So they're all seventy-two. This is big secret about the show. It's all old-school vaudeville writers. That's they got. You know what? In CBS, so I can almost believe it. You know what it is? Is these old-school vaudeville writers? You get your grandson, say grandson, just sign your name on this script for me, would you, please? Thank you. Now I'm just gonna mail this. Off, so just let me know if he does. Laugh track. But that's how they get that 23 skidoo great writing. So, did you watch Supergirl this week, Phil? Yes, I did. Okay. <sighs> okay, like, why do I love Lena Luther so much? But I just, I just really hate the convenient plot point is convenient to make her an idiot. Because the other episode that I saw that she was in, she was like, oh my God, literally female Lex Luther? Like, on oh, that scale. And then this one is just like. <laughs> I mean, because what they you put lead I mean? in the atmosphere, Lilith. There's lead in the atmosphere. That's not good for anybody. Well, CW writers room is not good for anybody sometimes because they do <laughs> no, like they just don't have consistent like levels of anything, whether it's common sense, power levels, like it's just all over the place no matter what show it is. Well so, I, how does she not know she's supergirl then too? Well, I kind of a cat grant thing but in reverse like she keeps it to herself it and the whole and nobody can know my secret but everybody knows my secret is just wearing really thin in the Arrowverse. but no i thought it was an okay 
episode, um, season three is a vast improvement over season one, which is the last season that I really watched consistently. <laughs> Alex has grown so much as a character, like, wow. <laughs> and since they took that break, you know, Flash and Arrow will be off the next week or, you know, the season finales in the next week or two. Supergirl's going to go to the middle, June 18th, middle of June, which yeah. is a very special day. What is it? June what? June 18th. What is it? Well, it's it's A, it's one of Superman's birthdays. Uh, um, it's Clark Kent's birthday because Superman's birthday is like February 2nd. But yeah. Hmm. Or is that vice versa? Either way. Yeah. It was back in the 80s. I don't think that's in continuity anymore. Nothing's in continuity anymore. Doesn't sound like a birthday on the calendar of Rao. <laughs> ah, the calendar of Rao. Oh, Krypton got a renewal. I saw that. I can't believe, first of all, I just binged season one and I was like, it's only seven episodes? Are no, you it's ten. Are you kidding no, me? It's ten. Oh, it's, it's ten? Yeah, there's a couple. It's not done yet? No, yeah, a couple. Oh. No, no. Okay, I was going to say, that is so random. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not done yet. Is it on a break then? Because I couldn't find it like the last two weeks. Uh, No, no, it's been on. Okay. <clears throat> not for nothing, well, short, short seasons are a thing now. It's like not, seven. We're not in. We're not in the UK. Uh, <laughs> I mean, ten. I get thirteen. I get, but anything less than ten. How many, many, events were, the, how many unfortunate events were there in the first season? Well, that's Eight. Netflix, though. That yeah, but I mean, yeah, but Legion. this is Sci-Fi Channel. That's basically a streaming network too. But Legion on FX. Well, the first season that was like what, like eight, I think. Well, yeah. it's because it was uh, uh, special effects heavy. Yeah. True. Yeah. But you know, but again, again, FX. It's basically a streaming network. You know, yeah. this is the thing. It's really you're not. Just... Stop saying that. It's a cable well, station. No, no, cable well... stations aren't the same as broadcast, like regular network stations. They can do that. But like sci-fi, every other show that they've had, even in the sci-fi genre, is like at least thirteen. Fight me, nerd. Like the uh, fans, no, but... the killer. I like. I watch sci-fi in the, in the past. Yes. What I'm saying is, is that the model is rapidly changing. <laughs> Because people are because the guys in this business are realizing, you know what? No one watches our channel. The channel is really secondary. Because when was the last? Because really, Agents of Shield is like the only thing that I actually sit down to watch. The only people who sit down and watch something are people who want to live tweet something. Which is a lot of people. (laughs) Which is a lot of people. I'm not saying it's a small market, but when you're, but when you're getting to that, it's a smaller market, and then you're getting to that fractionalization of a market. So there's a small number of people who sit and watch. There's a small number of people who are going to watch sci-fi. There's a small number of people who have cable that are going to let them go to the sci-fi channel. There's a small number of people of that people who are going to watch Krypton. It's basically, okay, there's a number of people who are going to watch this when we, you know, on demand later. And because it's an on demand, because it's, because their mindset is going to, most of these shows are going to be on demand. You know, most of these shows are going to be something we're going to watch it on Hulu. We're going to watch it on our app. They're going to watch it on something. They're just going to live tweet it. Yeah. No, the number of people who are going to live tweet are very small, you know? And uh, honestly, what I'll tell you is probably going to, you're going to start seeing this coming soon. And Twitter, million dollar idea to start selling your company. Start having people form live streaming, live streaming clubs. So everyone, we're all going to watch. They, they already. They already have that. They already have that? Okay, no one's invited me yet, so that's fine. But I'm not on Twitter very much, so maybe if I was, I'd be like, hey, let's all watch this, you know? But, um, we need that. Hey, you know, um, but no, but this is what I'm saying, is that the model has changed, and now people are looking at these shorter seasons because it's cheaper, and quite frankly, they don't want to be in a situation like poor Black Lightning right now with 100 episodes. And people that are like, oh, I gotta watch that many episodes to catch up. Black Lightning. Black Lightning. It's a show. Yeah, I know, but a hundred episodes, and they only no. did like they didn't do a full season. I don't think they did more than. I don't eight. know. I know that I know that it's more than eight. Yeah, it's more than eight. But <laughs> I don't so think... if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sit and binge it. It's gonna take me a while. But I'm, I don't think I don't think it was more than like thirteen or something. That's not a lot. Yeah, well, well, sure. For you, you're a DC fan. You know, this is the, <laughs> I have to cross universes. Yeah, but you don't think a lot of people. DC pe- universe. You don't think a lot of people just like can binge at like 13 like that in a couple days? Well, yeah, if they don't have kids and they have free time, yes, I'm sure they could. Fire. Um, and they don't want to sit and drink for a good portion of their day so that they can actually unwind from a lifetime of stress and numbers. Yes. 
There are Char- people who can Char- binge watch 13 episodes really quickly. Charlie I thinks no one wants no to watch Black Lightning because they have so many episodes already. No, I'm not saying no one's going to watch Black Lightning. I'm saying that it is it becomes a barrier. Oh, 13. If you want to watch a show. But you, you forget the demographics that they're actually targeted towards, which they love to binge. They literally say, oh, I wish I could live watch this, but I can't Can't wait till it comes out on Netflix. That okay. is their demographic. And that, that's and, the CW. And, and, and no, and that's fair. And that's fair. And what? And but uh, again, that same idea is what moves you to shorter seasons. Yeah. Well, CW won't do shorter seasons like because yeah. that was a mid-season replacement. I guarantee mm-hmm. you, it'll be at least sixteen episodes next season. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I was gonna say, Legends of Tomorrow has never been more than like sixteen or seventeen. I don't think. Yeah. 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 And 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 that's the thing. And and maybe maybe I'm I'm being overly dramatic saying eight is a good number because actually but what i'll say is when i got to that end of the eighth <laughs> episode of S- series of unfortunate events i was like why that is the most unfortunate event that there's only eight episodes because it made me want more and as they say in showbiz always leave them wanting more yeah it's kind of why i don't i can't watch uk shows anymore like i just can't get invested because a they're quick to cancel anything that's not doctor who yeah. <laughs> or uh downton abbey like <laughs> Yeah. But but Lilith, this last week, episode eight of Krypton aired, and there's two more left. So okay. Well, I saw the first seven, yeah. and I was just like, "Do you that's like- an odd place to end it?" Yeah. Do you I, like I, it? It's okay. Yeah. But like, I yeah, I, it needs to find its footing. So it's just mm-hmm. kind of like season two will be that. It's kind of like with Supergirl. It's like okay, we'll see what season two does, and that'll tell the tale of if it has any legs to be have longevity you're just there for calling salmon honestly really that's the only reason why i binge it i had to catch up yeah <laughs> but you know what and you make this thing about bbc shows but that's why bbc show, shows have done so well in streaming services well they've course. actually created their they? own well, well i know bbc i play but they, they've got they, they've decided to open their own streaming service they've been because they've been giving everyone else money for so long um but yeah but netflix was built itself on bbc shows that's why it was this big tragedy when when netflix got rid of most of its bbc shows and now they brought them a lot back because they're like oh you guys got really like those huh um because the fact of the matter was is that short well, no it's because they're cult followers because they only have one season <laughs> well, yeah, but you know what but that's what you want and not for nothing for british actors although they'd like to have that regular work they like the fact that they know that okay yeah this season this series is ended but you know there's another series coming next week yeah because because anything on the bbc they only have like 12 actors <laughs> only, there's only 12 people that really want to be actors in england the british psyche oh, is very yes not, not not towards acting i think um, tom holland would like to have a word with you sir well no, all, all, all the ones no but they all come to america that's all I'm saying. Oh, he's saying there's only 12 left over there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It's just Elba would like to have a word with you. Sir. No, there's lots of great Half actors in England, like but they, all, they all leave. Yeah. They all leave and come to America where they're making shows. But and they go on the walk Because the, the shows get, last longer, they get more of a paycheck. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about. You know, I, you know, but that you know that's that is the classic immigrants argument. Do I stay here, where I have things I know? And consistency, or do I make that adventure to the new world where there may maybe if you're white and male, no matter what country you're from, it's not an adventure. I'm just saying, you're probably gonna do pretty good. I'm, I'm just saying. You know, I, I'm gonna say this. You know, it's there's a lot there's a lot of Austrian immigrants who never lost their a- a- accent who are not Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's all I'm gonna say. There's a lot of muscle. But they bones. probably own bakeries and do very well, or something well, like yeah, that. Well, you know, because they 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 take risks. Because they, if they came to the new world, you're taking a risk. You're the kind of man or woman who is going to take risks and build something. That's why immigrants make this country great. Yeah, upward hey, mobility. Immigrants. Although we are losing that, but unless you're an yeah. entrepreneur, that's the only way there's going to be upward mobility for a while. Well, yeah, well, but not for nothing. We're, no, America is becoming much more like a, m- most other European nations, whereas, you know, where it's, it's, it's local population is becoming complacent and it becomes much more about moving into that steady, you know, the BBC is going to cast another show so I don't have to worry as an actor. I can be a working actor. I'm just going to do 1,500 different shows, but I'm going to get, as an actor, 
20 different kinds of roles to play, so that'll be wonderful. Um, meanwhile, we have the thing that America has that most other countries don't have is this immigrant sensibility that, you know, a country of immigrants, except for Native Americans, you know, sorry, guys, <laughs> who were brought, who came to this country or were brought to this country who are building a world for themselves. And the idea of building this world and that this world, this is a country that doesn't have an identity that is going to be thrust upon you because, because it is a true. Trump would like to have a word with you. <laughs> well, you know what? He is, he is, he is not libertarian. He is not conservative. He is not, he is not egalitarian. He is nothing that the Republican party is supposed to be. So I reject him yeah. and his view of reality. Um, yeah. The Republican Party is supposed to be egalitarian. No. Uh, entrepreneurial. That, that went out the window a while ago, Jerry. Yeah, I know. No, went out of the window with Nixon. Nixon, <laughs> you know, Nixon went for low-hanging fruit. And if you go for low-hanging fruit, you get the ripest fruit, but the ripest fruit rots the fastest. That's right. That, no, that's the truth. That's the truth. The ripest fruit rots, rots the fastest. And you say, oh, here's low-hanging fruit with these, you know, <clears throat> racist white people. Let's bring them into our our, our our constituency and it's going to build us out. Whereas the Republicans historically had been a party of immigrants. It had been Irish and Italian people coming to America through the cities and being this big East Coast block of Republican intellectuals and immigrants. Well, yeah, who no, to build a new country. <laughs> yeah, no, it, they, they threw it out. They threw out what made, made the Republicans great. And... But you know, yeah. it's it, just like anything, politics has these great ebbs and flows and highs yeah. and lows and the title change and it'll be something else. That's right. Well, one can hope so. One can hope that Donald Trump is not the man to kill the Republican Party. And I believe that if we haven't had so many Republican, so many parties die in this country, Democratic Republicans, the Whigs, you know, there are lots of, you know, we've had this two party system only since the Civil War, about a hundred years or so. And now we get porn stars on Saturday Night Live. Well, yeah. Porn well, stars there's Saturday nothing Night wrong Live. with porn stars in and of itself. I'm just saying, don't be a prude. No. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just, I know. No. I get, oh, but, oh, but get, we also get Childish Gambino. <laughs> oh, that's right. Saturday Night Live. Did you see what Charlie discovered this week? Yeah, uh, that's why I brought it up. Apparently, Donald Glover and Charles Campino are the same person, which I want to feel like you knew that, but you just got confirmation. Is all. It's well, what it is, it's like one of these things where I think you guys have actually told me that before, but it's like it's one of these, like I said, that very bad filing system. He doesn't even wear glasses, Charlie. He doesn't have a secret identity. Like, I know what people look like. Here's what I'm going to say as far as as far as um, Charles Gambino and Donald Glover goes. Well, it's not your kind of music. Two names. Why do you need two names, sir? Really? Because rappers always have like eighteen thousand names. First of all, is there a lot of people in show business use fake names, like different names? It's it's fine to have a fake name, but once you've established a fake name, you go with it. Well, what I thought was that he wanted to be a rapper before he got into a comedian, so Childish Gambino came first. And okay. the whole acting thing actually worked out and then propelled his career as a rapper. And, and fair enough. And, and fair enough. But, you know, like, and especially because, okay, here's the thing. Nobody here's wants the, a rapper named Donald Glover. That, that's all I'm saying. No, that, that's but, not what the kids want. Okay, you know why Donald Glover is one of my favorite entertainers? Okay, why? Okay, he used to be on AOL Instant Messenger years ago, back when that was a thing. And he found out that his name, Dong Lover. Yeah, I know this joke. <laughs> yeah, I love that joke. It's like, oh, that's so beautiful. And so every time I see his name, I think, oh, it's Dong Lover. I love him, Dong Lover. Because <laughs> it's a silly, it's a childish joke, as childish Gambino. Uh, and with, but it, and like I said, I got nothing against him being childish Gambino. It's great. I understand he makes fantastic music. You know, if I had time to listen to music, I probably would. Um, you know, I, I. I, 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 you know, I mostly listen to Will Yankovic and Epic Rap Battles of History. Uh, no new Epic Rap Battles, guys. What's going on? Um, Ooh, shots fired. Yeah, you know. Do you what? support them on Patreon? Because I know they got bills to pay. So if you okay. want more, you better put your money. So does Charlie, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Not for nothing. Yeah, there's lots of people I like who give me free content that I would love to give money to. 
But you know, uh, Benjamin also play. wants Benjamin <laughs> and Tristan both want an Xbox, and they want the new one. Oh goodness! Oh uh, no! And 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 Ben wants Apple products. He's one of these Apple people, like Phil. Phil, you're corruptible. First, Tyler's kids love a Nightwing, <laughs> and now, now Ben wants Apple products. Shame yeah. on you, sir. You, you know, gotta teach him the joys of a Windows operating system. I'll be honest with you, uh, Ben's whole thing is he wants GarageBand. And you there's not a- audacity and keep it moving. <laughs> audacity is free. Uh, does does audacity have all the things that GarageBand has? You can get the plugins, yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay, I'll have to discuss with him audacity. And we'll look into it because uh, we've downloaded a couple things, and he says oh, it's not the same as GarageBand. You know what it is? Well, he- I will say GarageBand is basic and easy to use, which like a lot of Apple products are. Wait, no, is it isn't GarageBand like Guitar Hero? Isn't there a GarageBand game? Because there's also a. I, I I don't know, I don't, Mr. Cardi B. I don't keep up with what the kids do no more. I ain't got time for it. I okay, work twelve no, hours GarageBand a day. GarageBand is, a, as I understand it, it's a music creation program. Yeah. It's not. It's not like where you're. You're thinking of Rock Band. You're thinking of Rock Band the game. Yeah. Okay. 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 GarageBand is. Or a, you could get them an iPad. I hear they're well, really. Cheap he, he'd them. love an iPad. You know, but I have to get one that can handle GarageBand. And when I was looking at like older iPads, he was like, no, I need the new one. He doesn't I, need the new one. What he needs is the iPad 4 updated to the current iOS. And there actually is a way to um, imp- just just message me later. I- I'll help okay. you out. <laughs> okay, yeah, help me out with that. Is okay. that the- <laughs> does get back down to honor roll from having to go to summer school this this, this uh, semester. We might actually, I might actually have to reward him. But I think the I think the biggest uh, thing we brought up here is a yeah people who give you free content you should throw some money their way. Yes, that yeah. thank you, Philip. You got what I was saying. Okay, yeah, you know, what? you can rock a t-shirt. You would have a phone case, a mug, perhaps. If you're looking for stuff to buy, look at the show notes and you know when this hits the podcast or even the YouTube uh this YouTube video. Look down. <laughs> Anyway, um, Supergirl, ugh, I hope it gets better next season. Flash, right. yeah. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. Why won't it end? What? Why is Iris an idiot? Like, I can't get behind oh. Iris now. Okay, I'm okay, the biggest okay. Candace Patton fan and biggest Iris defender on the internet, but I can't. I can't with her. Okay. The, the biggest flaw, okay, this week Iris wanted to write a story explaining that the thinker's whole plan. And blah 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 blah. I mean, forget the panic it would cause. Isn't this not conducive to a secret identity? But they'd be like, okay, how did you get all this information about the thinker? And are you talking about the same guy your husband was just uh, accused of murder? Accused of murdering? Yes. Convicted of murdering and then exonerated or whatever. And they can't, they can't pull that trick again because they don't have Ralph right now. So. Um. And he can change his identity to look like anybody. The thinker now, yeah, because he got Ralph's body. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a great setup for a uh, terroristic panic. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe that's what they're setting up, Lilith. Now that that next season, it's going to no, be. No, they all just about- want to make Iris look like an idiot. Like I, the Arrowverse cannot write female characters. You know what? I don't think they intentionally wanted her to look like an idiot. They think they're like building her up, but it's not working. I think we have a secret Mark Guggenheim in that writers' room who had who somebody had. We all. Well, I won't even say somebody. Mark Guggenheim had something against Katie Cassidy, so he totally rewrote the character that Andrew Cressberg and Greg Berlanti wanted that character to be. He had a vendetta for whatever reason, and we all see how that turns out. And I see inklings of that with this character. That's all that I'm saying. There's something toxic in the whole Arrowverse writer's room, and I don't like it. Lilith, can I just make a quick statement here? Sure. You opened up this whole thing about how DC's TV properties were doing great. So they don't. I mean, The Flash is still the highest rated superhero show on TV. Don't get me wrong. Well, okay, it's, you know, uh, and it, it makes its merchandise. I didn't say that it was good quality. I said that it's making money. But the writing is she's the writing is. I didn't say it was good quality. Well, you know, I said it was making nothing, money. All the DC properties are profitable, but they're not making in that Marvel scratch. Oh. Movies. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is, is that these things. Yeah, you know, if you have a nice small pond and you're making a really big fish, it's great that it can eat up smaller fish, but it's <laughs> it, it, it ain't a freaking megalodon. So when you say that, it, you know, you DC's think, like said, 
Tony. DC is doing just fine in its lane. It's found its lane. Maybe they'll learn to burn down that studio, the, the movie studio, and rebuild some, sometime soon. But the TV land is just fine. It's profitable. It's okay. making money. And I guess the Flash is the highest rated superhero show on TV. It's fine. It makes okay. its merchandise. It's got books and tie-ins and all those things. It's doing fine. Yeah, if that book ever comes out. Back to my point. Writing is not the best. They don't know how to write women there. And I, I mean, they have tons of female writers in the writer's rooms. Like, I just, I cannot for the life of me figure this out. It, it's very irritating. Well, yeah, actually, who's their head writer? Um, on that show, I, mm, I can't remember now. Is it the, no show, is it the yeah. Hebling Boys? It's the Hebling Boys. Um, Todd and his brother, Hebling. Oh. And then for Legends, it's Phil Clomer. Okay, yeah. Which he is about to really ruin Legends next season, I think, if he goes down the whole somebody will betray us. Yeah, like, we don't watch Legends for drama. We watch it for the campy fun and how well everybody works together. Yeah, like, I just don't obviously. think they understand their demographics. So, Lil, if I have a question about Legends, what episode do you think uh, Lucifer is going to show up? <laughs> no, nobody, nobody is petitioning for Lucifer to join the Arrowverse. Not yet. Unfortunately. They just made the no, announcement I mean, no. yesterday. I know, but Stephen Amell was like, well, there were inklings that Cam- Constantine was going to be canceled. So he was like, hey, like Stephen was really proactive about it. I, I don't like for the life of me know why, really. <laughs> but I don't, I don't see to- uh, Stephen doing that for them. Hmm. And I don't want it because I don't. Well, plus Detective Douche was already on in yeah. Arrow. So that would be like, I know Juliana Harvey, they played like an angel, but that was just like a minor thing. So I just don't think it will work out. And I don't really like Lucifer show. Like, I- I'll just be real. I don't really like it. It's like it, too it much rom. It's potential. It came like too much of a rom com. I think that was the problem. Well, I, I, at one point I, I said, you know, my biggest problem with Lucifer was just that, you know, not being a fan of it. At a certain point, it stopped. It it seemed to me like if I didn't know this character was supposed to be the devil, I would not know that that character was the devil. Yes. You know, it's like it's oh. In fact, at a certain point, it almost seems like is he. Like, you know, I'm sure like people at the beginning of the show, like the characters were like, oh, he's just some crazy guy who thinks he's the devil. And exactly. when I came into the show, it's like, oh, he's some crazy guy who thinks he's Mr. Frost. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's greatest performance. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first couple episodes of season one, I'm like, OK, yeah, this guy's the devil. And then they I don't know, they try to lighten him. I up, like but... the, and I even like the therapist angle, especially the woman who played the therapist. It just yeah. it just ran its course and they made a lot of poor choices and then they go with the stunt casting of Tom Welling and it's like okay that's all fine and dandy but... Tom Welling killed Lucifer but for not for nothing this is why short seasons and quick cancellations aren't the worst thing because you say okay here's our story we've run our story now we're going to end our series no it's and... called not letting the suits interfere and actually letting lucifer be based on the comic book that it's based well, on but, and not a damn cop procedural disguised as a rom-com like not for nothing <laughs> they get to the big arc so and then they known. But with so many shows, and, and granted, something like Lucifer, yeah, that could go on forever, except you're also talking about an immortal deity who has decided to live in a very tiny spot on Earth to do things. And you have to say, why doesn't he get bored? Well, even the whole immortal thing, you know. Because human like, pleasures are damn amusing, okay? And even the like, immortal. The even the- horrific is from Buffy. Mm-hmm. This dimension may suck, but champagnes and bubble bath ain't one of them. Okay? <laughs> even the whole immortal thing. I mean, even Angel had that problem. It's like, you know, that you know that show's going to have a shelf life because people age and, you know, supposedly. Yeah. And I, we age discussed life. the loophole on Wade's World. And that is my head candid for when they bring the revival back. Because it's happening. David Boreas is gonna get off that god awful CBS show. Whatever he's doing is like a Navy SEAL or something. I don't. I don't even. Know. But that show's gonna he's get canceled, and we're he gonna do an angel. Lost out of the way. He's back in shape. They they give him a trainer on that show. They didn't give him a trainer on. Uh, on well, on, he didn't need a trainer on both because <laughs> they were never like as, as as urgent as those cases were. Everybody was always just walking and standing. <laughs> no, but I'm. But, you know, I mean, actually, Angel is one of these characters where you see him in the first time he shows up on Buffy and he looks like a teenage kid. And you see him in the last season of Angel. It's like, who is this grown, grown man? And why is he pretending to be a teenage? Uh, this man dated a teenager in high school. This doesn't make any sense. It made sense at the time, but like retroactively, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that on our Angel podcast, and you're welcome to join us when you can, oh, Charlie. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing that off and on. Oh, I, man, I got I got so mad by by the by the by the comic book 
follow up season of Angel when they because it, oh, yeah. it ruins that, all that, your head canon. Yeah, but it gets it better, really, and then Angel and Faith actually is pretty awesome. Yeah, oh, no, I mean, I mean, it was actually I actually liked reading the story, but I had this great head canon for it. Oh, and it was like, oh, that's not my head canon. And not, not for nothing. It was kind. Of, it's kind. Of, it's kind of like an Infinity War thing, where it's like, well, that's not what we expected, but oh, well, it's a good story, you know. It's like every time you, which you know, and that and that is what I always say is what is great in when when TV attempts comic books, but having it go in reverse, it was just weird. I don't know when when a, when a comic book Charlie. ruins my head cannon for a TV show. It's like. Wait a Lil, minute. Lil is, Lil is the last person on the planet who hasn't seen Infinity War. Okay. I really am. She's waiting for cable. It's 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 fine, you know. I'm not even waiting for cable. Like I could literally watch it now, but I don't Arr. know. <laughs> Arr. And, so you know, like, it's, I'm being stubborn and a contrarian on this one thing. This is the hill that I'm gonna die on. I'm not it's, I'm not you know what? Okay. If Lilith doesn't know how Infinity War ends at this point. She's just she, she she's actively avoiding spoilers. Okay. Well, my friends are courteous. First of all, like everybody that I follow on social media is courteous. Well, okay, not for nothing, Lilith. You're on a spoiler podcast. We 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 do we do warnings all the time. And, and I watch I watch podcast. the roundtable, and I I got what I got out of it, and that's fine. Okay. But I so you know yeah so. Yeah, exactly. She knows. And not for nothing, it's not even spoiling at this point because it's out. If you haven't seen it, people just... have like everybody around me has seen it at least twice. And I'm just like, suckers, whatever, not getting my money. It's good entertainment. No, that's my... What I'll tell you, Liz, is you know what? I enjoyed the film. Every that's time you saw it. <laughs> Every time. All three times. I would oh. love to see the fourth time if I can and actually Maz, oh my good friend Maz, he's giving me he he's giving me uh one of the he's got like that. Give a friend a free month trial of Movie Pass. So like, yeah, it's like oh hello. Movie Pass changes rules specifically because of Infinity War, where you can't see like how many times you can see a movie in like a day or a week or whatever. Well, yeah, well that's fine. But I, I don't need to see it again twice. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, save your month, save your month for uh, July. Because Ant Man and the Wasp comes out the beginning of July, end of July. Teen Titans go to the movies. Mm, that's so. I was thinking about using it for Deadpool. Oh, although, yeah. Although, although Maz said, you know, you might not get it in time for Deadpool. Oh, uh, because I was gonna say, yeah, in, in May. Yeah, next week is Deadpool two, and then I think the week after is Solo. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, there's lots of good. I mean, there's. You know what? It, it, we're in movie season. Yeah, I was gonna say it's blockbuster season, like literally. Yeah. I mean, honestly, when when does Captain Marvel come out? Because I certainly want to see that. And who Mark. knows? The entire reason for giving this is to say, but well, maybe you'd like to see some more movies. How exactly. much money is it? If I get my, you know, oh, and by the way, update on my job. They said like, you know, because you know, after I had my whole complaint session last episode. <laughs> Your boss uh, listens to the podcast. Oh, apparently so. I hope so. I hope people listen to this podcast and don't tell me because I'm very honest here that I can't be in other situations. And I always tell people I want everyone to be honest with me. But you can't always be. I'm not going to swear this time. <laughs> it's the first time I've sworn in the entire 40 years I've done this spot any of these podcasts. <laughs> so, so we started this before like Lil was born. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, yes. Yeah, so when I was four years old, I had my first podcast. Let's say when I was. A and you were, the, and you were in the womb, Phil. <laughs> and everyone said, "Why is it called a podcast?" I said, "Don't question me." Don't You're just talking at the TV. It's like, it'll make sense someday. He's the one who he's the one who took Tesla's time machine. Aha! Uh, it, it was it was um, Grover Cleveland's time machine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tesla wants to take uh, uh, credit for it, but it was Grover Cleveland. Grover you know, Tesla might have d- designed it, but Grover Cleveland paid for the dang thing. So that's that. <laughs> But no, no, Trump did use it. I like, what, that, that's actually, I think that's a Venture Brothers reference, I think. But no, Trump did use a time machine because he's like Biff Tannen. Back to the Future uh, 2, come on. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, I we've, know. All seen, we've all seen Back he to the Future 2. He has that too, so you might be on to something. The White, House, yeah. the White House is Biff's pleasure paradise, come on. Uh, uh, don't, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like when my favorite TV shows and movies of dystopian futures become documentaries. It's not fun. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to push through. I'm trying to push through. Right, Flash so- is 
Flash is a poop circle. No. And I don't know how they're gonna resolve the season finale. Like the power of love and friendship, and we are the Flash. I'm gonna break somebody's TV, not mine, because I paid too much don't, money for it. Don't, <laughs> break somebody's TV. They'll reveal Ralph is alive still. Somehow. Duh. Yeah, but I want. He's gonna go meet Sue, and he's not gonna be in the next season, just like Julian. What's gonna happen with Harry? Like he's losing his intelligence. Uh, is he? Is he gonna completely lose it? Is the thinker gonna transfer himself into Harry's head? So like Tom Cavanaugh <sighs> be the villain again? No, Harry will uh, steal the thinker's intelligence. He's that gonna transfer. Uh, it. Yeah, oh, he's gonna. Yeah, because 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 not for nothing. That. Yeah, that's, I mean that's the most logical thing to do. It's like, oh, here's a person with too much intelligence who's causing us problems. Why don't I just take a little of that? <laughs> you know. Also, they were teaching him emotional intelligence with the with the Council of Harrisons, so yes. that is very that very much a possibility, which is what's wrong with the thinker right now because he's lost his humanity. So maybe he's lost yes. that loving feeling. Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 no! If you're teaching him emotional intelligence, what he's going to do is he's going to con the thinker. Into something to give him the intelligence. <gasps> He's gonna pull a living lightning on him. Oh, oh living lightning! Yeah, you gotta bluff it. You gotta bluff it, man. It's, he's, they're gonna, they're gonna be. They're gonna say, "Let's play cards," and they're gonna have that moment. And he's gonna say, "You know, I bet this," and then, and he's gonna bet his intelligence, and the thinker's gonna lose, and he's gonna have to give it up for reasons, because you know. I mean, it worked with the grandmaster. The grandmaster was about games. So I don't know if it actually plays exactly, but yeah. But he's going to use his emotional intelligence to beat him. Because as we learned in last episode's super connectivity, emotional intelligence is way more profitable than actual intelligence, which is why Sheldon hates his brother. Because his brother actually has supreme emotional intelligence, which is why he's, a successful he's, why he's a successful businessman, why his sister's the... Uh, Head of like the head hostess at her restaurant, you know, because it doesn't always work. But um, but you can build your own life and because have that. She's an icky girl, Charlie. And Big yeah. Bang Theory does not like their women. Yeah. Well, no. Well, what it is is you can you can build uh you can build a that basically wealth can be measured in lots of ways. You can have monetary wealth like Jerry O'Connell, or you can have a social wealth, which is what a person with emotional intelligence is called. Social wealth has a value. Actually, only if you transfer it to social media and likes and shares. Damn it, Charlie! I don't know what podcast uh, Sheldon's sister's on. She may be like one of the big YouTube stars. She may have unboxing video that may come up in the final episode, where it's like, oh no, my my unboxing videos have like eight million likes. You know, I actually get money from YouTube. That could be a whole. Which is getting harder and harder every day. That's why you have to I support know. your Which creators. Is you know which what? Is I, why, which is why I shouldn't give money to Epic Rap Battles. Because before I was saying, hey, I watched those commercials to the end Epic Rap Battles history. But did you click I on did, it? Did you go to the website? Because that's the only part that counts. Did you know I that? Did, I didn't push scary. skip ad. I didn't push skip no, ad. No, you have to actually like go like when there's a little clicky thing. Those are the most profitable ones. You actually click the link and go to the website and stay on for more than thirty seconds. Just, 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 just share that. Just so you know. And I'm going to get all kinds of Russian viruses on my computer. I don't even speak Russian. You should. It's in a very interesting language. I'm sure it is. Maybe very utilitarian and practical. I actually enjoy I'm, Russian. I just, I don't have the tongue for it. Yeah, you know, I, right now I got to learn Spanish, okay? My, 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 golden, my goal this summer Wait is to learn Spanish. You, you've been out, you, what? You don't, not I don't speak little. Spanish. I, of course I speak a little bit of Spanish, but I don't speak it well enough that you should have, a, that you should have an HR professional. He can say, where's the beer, Lil? So what more does he need? Oh, that is the, that is the library. library. Just where's the beer? <laughs> Donde esta cerveza? I can say, oh, Donde es el, el baño? Okay. El baño. That, that's an important that, thing to know, though. Seriously. Although it's important to actually... More than the disco I mean, in the library. Actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Donde es el baño is useless if you don't know left and right, which I don't know in Spanish. I never took Spanish. Uh, I took that to French. It's Guinea or whatever. Yeah. Ah, I have not lived in California for a very long time. No, but no, but, that, but my goal for the summer is to learn Spanish. And there's like a free thing on my computer called uh, I don't know one of those. It's that it's that second language app. So I got to look it up. I've got to see what it does. I'm gonna get a language app that says Just it'll teach you the, the city. <laughs> well, okay, that is not the same as an app, Lilith. <laughs> I can get it's, Spanish it's people in my apartment very easily. I, I have like 
four Spanish channels. They all come in on my on my, on my uh, antenna. Of course they do. Yeah, it's like weird. Like, like all the English channels, they're like all all hoity toity. But the Spanish channels, no, no, no. We're totally totally broadcasted away frequency that your your TV will pick up. So I've got like I got a ton of Spanish. I can learn Korean easily if I wanted to because I have like two Korean channels. Teach love. Yeah, I'm pretty good with my 19 year old tutor. He's uh, he's good. No, no, I'm sure Lilith is doing fine. And Lilith has to Lilith has to learn Korean. I want to learn Spanish. Yeah, that's the difference. That's the big difference. So it's like she doesn't have time to do what I'm what I'm gonna do. So like Spanish speakers, I can get Spanish language. I can get exposed to, but I need something that's gonna like help me. Help me learn it. I actually, like I said, I know, I know considerably a lot of Spanish. Although, like I said, I really do not know left and right in Spanish, and it, and it bugs me that I don't because I know it in German. Uh, Donald because actually. German's so practical <laughs> in this day and age. German used to be practical, actually, but not so much anymore. Oh, we lost him. You insulted him. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Well, while we have a free moment, um, yeah, I Arrow. Mean, well, I'm not I'm not down on the flash as you are, but yeah, what did you think of Arrow this week? What did I even watch? Remember, like, um, the listening is just like, no, you should have stayed in the bunker. Why is Oliver apologizing? <laughs> what happened to my BA Oliver from season one? She came so close to getting killed, and were you like, yes, yes, shoot her in the back? I knew it wasn't gonna happen. If they didn't yeah. kill her in season, at the end of season five, it ain't never. Or when they shot her and made her paralyzed, it ain't never ever gonna happen. But Quentin's gonna die. We all know this, right? Well, they say say that they said he's leaving. So yeah, he's dead. He did. Yeah, and, the, and that's unfortunate. That's like the last grown up on the show, and I'm just like not here for it. Well, they said that was the you know now when he when Paul Blackford leaves, the only two people left from season one are going to be Oliver and Diggle. Yeah, Ramsey and Emil. Uh, and technically, I know people got like their feathers ruffled. Katie Cassie left. Well, was forced out for a year, so so that's why she doesn't count people. Okay. Just calm your titties. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm like, I'm like, Aaron now. Yes, we're on Aaron. Now, but uh, I don't know. So that's fair. Well, do you like Ricardo Diaz? I'm really not. No, like this is not the Richard Dragon. He's no. not a threat. I mean, Kate and James is more of a threat than this loser. Yeah, I don't know why they make this guy so powerful. He's not. He's not. And uh, I but, like oh. Kirk, Kirk. I love him, but like, mm-hmm. it was just like what they did to Michael Emerson. It's just like, no. No, the actor seems good. It's just I don't like what they give him. He doesn't want to be a loser. And the quadrant? Really? Where was the quadrant when <laughs> Tobias Church was trying to take over? Um, why are they letting Burton Nelly do his thing? Like, what in the world is I just want to smack that writer's room. Why weren't they I going just, after Malcolm Merlin in season him. one? You know? My 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 ultimate theory of Arrow is that Raza is behind it all. Oh, the maid. Mm-hmm. That's why she disappeared for so long and came back in this season. <gasps> and now she has Oliver's kid. <gasps> like, I, like honestly, like just, just do something unexpected instead of something so tragically stupid. Like, you, surprise me. You are dead. Wait, who you has dead. who has Oliver's kid? His mate. Because <laughs> they. No, that's that's my theory. Just like much put, like Felicity is actually the ultimate big bad of the entire series. She inserted all- herself into his life and made him a total. Punk. They put all the kids in Argus custody, so the big bad could because they they all got attacked at the beginning of the episode this week. The big yeah. bad was trying to kill everybody. William is so useless. Like he's so inconsistently written. They don't know if they want him to be eight or fifteen. <laughs> like, That's true. I, I don't know how old this kid's supposed to be because yeah, you he's know, he's supposed to be like a, eleven or twelve. Most times if we go according to the timeline. Sometimes he's a teenager. Other times he seems like a whiny eight year old. Yeah, I don't know who. He's like Franklin. He's Richards. Like a wild dog. Oh, dog's no, 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 daughter's no, 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 the best. He's got that time manipulation power like Franklin Richards. When he feels like being older, he he allows himself to age, and when he wants to go back to that childhood status, he. Re- Regresses the timeline, or he's just the a, writers sp- have that in their own head. Or he's just like a, or he's just a spoiled uh, rich man's son. That's <laughs> well, that's only been like what nine months of. I mean, his mother lived modestly, rejected where his money. money so changes, I mean, money changes you quickly. <laughs> you know money doesn't nice. change you. Money amplifies who you are as a person. You know what? It be brings nice out either your best or worst quality. Is if there was a superhero who was super wealthy who just became a superhero because it was the right thing, not because of a personal tragedy? They used to do that, didn't they? I mean, the the Flash got his power in the comics. Barry Allen got his powers. He, he didn't have any personal wealthy. tragedy. Yeah, but he yeah. wasn't a millionaire. He wasn't a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like 
Well, even even the angel kind of had um, kind of a personal tragedy in that yeah. he was raised in a prison. You know, uh, the original angel. He was sort of he was Marvel's original Batman. Well, I um, think I think with the whole personal tragedy angle, it's like, well, you know, why would a rich guy go out there in a costume? They, they instead, don't believe that altruism exists. Is the point? point. It, Charlie, at <laughs> this point, why didn't he just give money and stuff to the police? And yeah, which we were talking about. Did, did we tell him he's got to read that now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Charlie, since he doesn't watch our specials, probably we did a review. <laughs> we did a review on YouTube. It'll hit the uh, Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks on Monday. Uh, Batman White Knight, mm-hmm. eight issue series. It's they good. They literally bring up everything except for the orphanarium and child eating <laughs> that I mean, you have problems I mean, with. About we wouldn't even get some Batman's face and be like, well, you know, we could have used Batmobiles and you know your equipment. Like, and you he literally gives them keys to Batmobile. So it's yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. Fair enough. Uh, well, yeah. Well, Gotham White White Knight is is supposed to be a complete, and I've actually wanted to read White Knight for a while. Oh yeah, um, you love yeah. it. Is the point that we were making? Yes. It was but literally it's, written it's for you. It's a, yeah, it's well, of course, it, it's written for Batman haters. Because um, <laughs> it's all about you know. <laughs> the guy that wrote it really seemed like he loved almost like every like old school fast Batman from Batman sixty six to the animated series to the eighty nine movie. Like none of this, most of that newfangled stuff is not in even hints. Well, you can't it. you can't truly hate Batman unless you also love him. It, it's like they say, you know, indifference is the opposite of 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 uh, love, not hate. Hate is oh, just a oh, fact. No. Of I know plenty of people like that hate. To, oh, Superman's so OP and boring. Have you ever read a Superman book? No. Have you ever? No. Okay, well, he then, just seems then, boring. I, I know, but what I'm saying is, is, is to have that ex- exquisite hate. You can actually say, "Here are the canon reasons I dislike the Batman character." That is, you know, you have to have a love of the character first, so that you can get that knowledge. And then, of course, as with so many things like religion and many things, as you learn more about it, you either grow in your love for it, or you come to respect its failures. But you never, you you never get more blind as you have knowledge. Well, we'll see. Get... We'll see when Bendis starts writing Superman. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if that point holds up. But, yeah, but yeah, no Batman White Knight. I mean, we also get two Harleys, the basically classic Harley versus modern Harley. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that honestly, I I I like Harley as much as the next guy. Harley doesn't have a huge amount of depth as a character beyond her basic backstory. Which is Harley Quinzel becomes the Joker's henchman, breaks free. As to what she wears, how she talks, what her relationship is with the Joker, I don't worry about that because to me that's almost like the evil version of of Reed Richards and Sue Storm. You know, Reed Richards is an absentee husband. You know, but there are times where he really loves his wife. Now, whether or not the Joker is physically abusive, that's a whole other bag of hammers. And if you cross that line, which I don't think I've ever seen the Joker cross that line. Unless you count pie in the face, then no, I don't think so. No, yeah. So I don't know if the, if any canon Joker has ever been a physically abusive or even really emotionally abusive uh, boyfriend to Harley, aside from just being your basic, I had a bad day fighting the Batman, please don't talk to me right now. Kind of, Which we all get those. Lilith knows. <laughs> We, I'm sure, you know, we all have those days where we come home where it's like, we don't want to be mean to the person in our lives, but, you know, it's it's been a hard day. I want to watch TV. I want to do what I ever do to unwind that doesn't involve any other people, including you, the love of my life. Um, yes, it's, a, it's literally a fortress of solitude for a reason. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Trust me. I, you know, I, I, I'm sure it's a re- there's a reason. Lois Lane was introduced before the fortress of solitude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, all right. Before we move on the comics, Lilith, at the end of Arrow, do you think this is going to lead to your Super Max story? It better. But I can't all, even say. All but Oliver, Oliver had to reveal himself, you know, to go after Ricardo Diaz. He had to reveal himself that an FBI agent after. Superman has said he wants his Iron Man moment. Yes. And, but like the weird thing about he said he's super pumped for season seven, which he hasn't said in a while. And I, like I, well, he might have said it, but it didn't feel like it was. You know, it felt like obligatory but this time he seems really pumped and rejuvenated much like he did for season five so i'm kind of excited but hesitantly so because i'm only going to be on the peripheral like i'm not watching a single episode next season he needs to be public he does but it's 
like they said that it's going to change forever and they're not going to take it back so it's not going to be like a death that well we know that paul blackthorne's leaving so more than likely he's dead yeah so if he doesn't have his iron man moment i don't i don't know it worked in the comic books but they can't seem to make any of the comic book storylines work so i just i just, i don't know but yeah also stay tuned for uh the season finales of Fla- arrow and then flash because lil and, and then and are and special and supergirl God, that's so long <laughs> from now. That's gonna be so weird. Supergirl's gonna be on like a month after everybody else. It's so weird. Well, you know, this is the, the thing that I find very interesting about the CW is that they're inching closer and closer to year-round content, mm-hmm. which I kind of approve of. I really do. I think a network like that needs year-round content. And I really want them to focus like poor Mark Pedowitz has been trying to get these like 30-minute comedies on air for like uh, since he's been president of the CW. And now that Valor didn't work out, which was another one of his passion projects, I really hope he focuses on comedy. I love that we have Whose Line Is It Anyway, Masters of Illusion, stuff like that. So I just don't want them to be the superhero network. You I know mean, what I mean? Because yeah. eventually that bubble's going to pop those and reality, they're going to feel it. Those are reality shows, not not comedy shows. Well, Whose Line Is It Anyway is kind of a comedy show. Well, I mean, it's a comedy show, show but it's a reality. I mean, it's a comedy it, game. It's show. a live shot. I yeah, mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, in the in the age of DVRs and stuff, I mean, these the, that's what these networks need to do is go to year round. Uh, yeah, well, this is the thing: CW doesn't have that same um, money behind them. I know people think, yeah. like, "Oh my God, CBS and Warner Brothers," but they have a very limited budget. But mm-hmm. I think with the year round programming, it will give eyes to the TV because I know, like, occasionally I'm like, "Oh, you know, TNT." That's how they kind of survive when they introduce the phone in. Or you embrace the, or you do like sci-fi, and you embrace the idea that we are basically a streaming network. Well, CW embraced that way back in like two thousand and like eight, nine. Yeah, 10. exactly. They, they've so, been ahead of the curve on that. But so, I'm just saying, like, you still need eyeballs on your actual network to produce the streaming. Is my point. Well, yeah, but like I said, I, I think the business model is changing. We're we're in that turning of the wheel. Well, that, Nielsen is not going to let it go without a fight that that's all yeah well no nielsen 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 can do ratings for other things because nielsen does do but they try it but it's not it hasn't been a successful advertising model which is the problem where the money comes from that's the problem which is why i don't think we're actually going to see actual hardcore broadcast network tv go anywhere for quite a while until they find a better system to make that money yeah well the making the money is the hard part (laughs) all right let's get the let's go to comics let's go to comics okay okay bringing people in about time, Phil. Let's start with Marvel first, because, yeah. All right. Charlie, did you read anything except for Deadpool 300? Nope. I read Deadpool 300. I haven't been to the comic book shop in literally weeks. So, um, basically, Jerry, who is it, Duggan or Dugan or yeah. final issue of Deadpool, uh, everyone's yeah. after after the despicable Deadpool. Oh, that, that that's Jerry. Okay. I, I don't know who the guy is. B-U-G-G-A-N. Yeah. Uh, you know, whoever you are, buddy, you're, you're, you're not famous enough to do a cameo. <laughs> oh, yeah, because okay. they make that joke. Yeah, he gets in the car with Deadpool, and he's and Deadpool even recognizes him. And he's like, wait a minute. He's like, are you doing a Grant Morrison Animal Man here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It, it, it is like, dude, but you know, I, I guess, I guess in fairness to him, he shot himself in the head for it. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, but dude, really, you know, this is something you do later in your career. I don't know how long Jerry Duggan's been doing this stuff, but I don't know who he is. So he's been doing Deadpool for like 10 years. Oh, uh, okay. So I guess if I was a Deadpool fan, I'd be like, oh, it's Jerry Duggan in his own comic book. No, so- not really. Okay. I mean, unless you're like Gail Simone or Christopher Priest, I'm just saying, like, well, yeah, that's something well, yeah. you like and excited for. Like, let's just be honest. Nothing, not for nothing, Gail Simone, you know, has a history beyond Deadpool. She does. If you're, coming, but... if you're coming into your own book from your own book, you know, unless you're Stanley in 1968 doing it, it's a little weird, you know. And for what it's worth, Stanley had been writing comic books long before then. And Stanley was writing comic books since the 40s with yeah. Jennifer Kirby's. So know. when they showed up in nineteen sixties with Patsy Walker at 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 the Reed and Sue's wedding, it was like, oh yeah, 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 those guys, you know. But I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, this is like Charlie said, it was a weird issue. And then he used this alien device he had to make everyone that like all the Avengers came after him. He made them throw up and stuff. And uh, yeah, so are you starting stupid. back at number one for Deadpool? Or is yes, it a- of course. Uh, especially, especially, especially after um, yeah, at the end he uh. Wade Wilson basically mind wipes himself and then puts on like his like OG costume. So, who's taking over? 
Um, I'm the best at shooting shotguns. I agree, Deadpool. I agree. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Wouldn't it be funny if it was Gail Simone? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it is, or else I would have remembered that. But no, I don't think it's. Yeah. No, she's doing Domino. Which yeah. I, mean, I know. Sure that, that was my lead in, by the way. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot to pick up Domino too. Deadpool. Oh, Domino's yeah. out this. Okay, well, I was yeah. actually my plan I, is to go to this store today. I forgot to pick it up. <clears throat> Little I thing you read it. Domino today. I yes. did read it, and guess who shows up? Which who? is probably why I was excited. It was Amadeus Cho. Oh, oh, good old Amadeus. Uh, I don't like him since he became the Hulk. Well, yeah, he, I have that he, problem with him too. But I wonder what's going to happen because he's only getting one more issue until Banner's back. Well, I just hope they de-Hulkify him. Because yeah. you know, he never, was great before he became the Hulk, though. Yeah, and and honestly, it's like a cheat for him. You know, it's like, oh, now I'm. And honestly, I think they, that they have played with that in the Champions, where he's like, we're basically being the Hulk. And I'm sure they did it in his his Hulk run, where it's like, oh, it's kind of a jerk now that he's the Hulk. Yeah, that he's kind of a jerk now that he has power. That when it was his mind, he actually could be a decent human being. But once you get once you give someone with po- uh, that kind of a mind actual power. That corrupts so much. Uh, yeah, absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I was, and I loved Amadeus Cho, even though he was always a jerk. Amadeus Cho was always a jerk, but he was kind of an interesting jerk when he when he was. I'm a jerk, and my power is I'm super smart, and I'm doing all these weird angle things like Captain America does all the time, even though no one ever gives Captain America credit for how smart he is. <laughs> Only reason Tony Stark and um, and Reed Richards could outsmart him uh, was because he was depowered at the time. Just saying that. That's why they. That's what because because regular Cap against Reed Richards and Tony, he would have had him captured in like you know a week. Because it's like no, actually, I actually have peak human intelligence. I actually see angles you guys can't even conceive of, and my brain works like at peak speed all the time. It's actually really annoying and painful for me to live this way. I just don't complain about it like you, Ben Grimm. <laughs> so, so little, so it was good then. It's really good. I think you guys will continue to enjoy it. We're also find out a little bit more. We're getting the mystery clues of who her evil counterpart is, and. It's just a good, fun story. The pacing was great. The artwork was great. Um, this is like Gail Simone on the, on top of her game. Like yeah. I haven't really like enjoyed a Gail Simone story in a while. So this is like, like really like falling back in love with Gail Simone. Did Did you Very read good. any Did you read any DC this week? I, of course I did. What did you read? <laughs> I read, um, of course, White Knight. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did. We did cover White Knight. Yes. Um, um Red Hood and the Outlaws. Red Hood and the Outlaws, yes. Uh, what else did I read? Um, Red Hood. Um, did you? I know. Justice you, uh, no Justice. I read that one. What did you think of that? <sighs> Who wants this? Uh, well, it's only like four. It what four ish? Yeah, one of four. Four ish. So why is there no Justice? Uh, basically, yeah. heroes working with villains. Uh, yeah, it's something from Dark Metal, which I freaking hated. Dark Knight Metal, which was <laughs> stupid. Is there no? <laughs> Because there's no justice? Basically, yeah, there's never peace in the DC universe. Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> Basically, Brainiac brings heroes and villains together and they have to fight like this cosmic threat. It's like almost like a... No, no, I won't, I won't say it. <laughs> I won't say it. But no, did you... Uh, no, I was hitting around. Did you read Detective or Flash? I read Flash. I told you, I'm not... I'm not interested in, in well, that. Well, I mean, they were kind of like the whole thing with Brother Eye. They were like he kind of like showed Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Kane who they were pre pre Flashpoint. So I don't know if they're they're going to start introducing more pre Flashpoint stuff again because that even Flash. Oh, okay. I mean, whatever floats their boat at this point. I just I just somebody needs to come and say we have to. It doesn't matter. Everything is Elseworlds Tales. Throw out New 52. <laughs> Every, Throw it out. Everything is Elseworlds Tales. Take what you want and make it your canon. Like, do so is, that, is that like the whole point of Bat Point is to give them <laughs> out for Flashpoint? I don't think. I don't think so. Has Bat no, they ran out of ideas yet? and they said, you know what's no. good? Flashpoint. No, it's, oh, it's, so just it's, been, it's just been in the issues of Batman, yeah. Okay. Although the May event is stupid. Have you guys seen the May event for what's DC? The, what's the it's May? another Hanna Barbera team up. Like it's four books. Well, I guess they're making okay. money with it. I mean, they keep going back. Hanna Barbera is selling well. No, they keep going back to it because I mean, what else are they going to do? 
you know, I, I I've only heard good things about any about the Hanna Barbera books, except the Jetsons, which actually I still hear good things about, but I I just don't like it. There's like um Super Sons team up with like something Dino Mutt or something like that. I'm just like whatever. This event sucks. Mm. Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a weird crossover. All of them are super weird. Yeah. Super weird. Well, to be honest, but what I liked about the Banana Splits crossover with Suicide Squad is the Banana Splits were like, what just happened? We're not supposed to be in this universe. Something weird is going on. And then, as far as I know, no one ever touched back on that. Like, this is why the Hanna-Barbera characters were crossing over. Nobody did, yeah. It, it's just yeah. weird. It's a weird choice. I mean, it's the, I mean, this is the weakest May event I've seen in, like, five years. Well, maybe they'll explain. Oh, the reason why everyone's crossing over is because of this obscure Hanna Barbera character. Great Gazoo did this or something. Well, none of them are tied together either, so it's just like these four individual issues. I don't know if they're just trying to like get the kids in, but at four bucks a pop, you you might as well say goodbye. These kids ain't giving up their unicorn frappuccinos at Starbucks for no damn comic book. Oh, no, you're <laughs> when you're saying kids, you mean adult people who buy comic books, not actual like Tristan and Ben. Like teenagers, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's what they've been wanting to get is like that. Um, Do that fourteen and nineteen year old. Oh, fourteen. Yeah, they, yeah. have you never been to a Starbucks? A, a nineteen year old is an adult. Yeah, and actually, I would say sixteen year olds are an adult. Fourteen, okay, maybe you're not really an adult yet. Like, 16, I mean, have you met um, nineteen year olds out here? Most of them I know are still living at home with their parents. So I just, <sighs> I'm just saying. Okay. People living at home and their parents do not make them not adults. It just makes them poor. Trust me, living in a house with a large family where lots of people, when they had unplanned children, came back and lived at home. I don't, I don't, I don't see a judgment of moving back home with your parents because you can't afford to live. Well, nineteen home. meaning you never moved out, you never even tried. Most nineteen, I know they never even tried. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's people, and honestly, that's a weird thing in New Jersey, especially with women, where they move from their parents' house to their, their to their husband's house. It's a weird thing. I don't understand it, but it's something people do, and it's actually just a thing that happens. So the the idea of adults living with their parents. And for what it's worth, it, w w with your whole squeeze generation of older parents moving back in with their kids, when they still have young parents moving back in, young kids moving back in, you know, that's a thing. That That's our culture now. Welcome to our slow motion dystopia. Um, we, we don't have that in Canada that I've seen. So sorry. Well, yeah, because you have universal health care. Universal health care solves so many problems. I'm still on private health care, and the private health care is way better than anything I ever had to experience down here. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, entirely possible. Entirely possible that the, that you can have a, a public health care system and then a private system on top of it. All right. Better because then you get like everything better. You know, it's like two things. Two is more than one, so two would be better than one. So, yes, I, I understand what you're saying. What I'm saying is, though, it, when you have that universal health care system, it actually keeps everything else from going to heck before you get to this dystopia, the slow motion dystopia that we live here in here in the U.S. All right, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> sure, fellas. Uh, that, that's all you read for DC this week? Uh, no, but those... Um... White Knight, uh, you mentioned Red Hood and the Outlaws, Flash, Batman, No Justice. Um, I think Red Hood and the Outlaws is picking back up finally. It was, it was oh, kind yeah. of dragging. Yeah. I got Green Lantern. I think I'm going to go pick up a uh, new Superman today. Oh, oh new Superman. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't want Bendis to be the only like Superman person in my life. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yes, I told you, I'm falling back in love with Superman and I just want to see his counterpoints. That's all. Yeah. Wonder Woman. I need to get back to reading comic books. Yes, you do. I'm so bad on comic books. It's like, you know. It's it's Marvel, but I got uh, Hunt for Wolverine, Adamantium Agenda number one. What happens? To, don't they have another one? Um, The Lost Weapon number one or whatever? Weapon Lost. Yeah, that, that number one of that came out last week. And then there's like two more miniseries, I think, coming out. So. And it's just like, oh, my God, you're really milking this Wolverine thing. It's Wolverine. What do you think? People like the Wolverine. He, People he, been he milking was, Wolverine since the, what, the 80s and 90s? Yeah, man. honestly, he was like the first Deadpool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, we have all these other just... He was like the first cash grab. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he was he was like Spider-Man, but for millennials. Canadians, bub. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? What's your mascot, Lil? He's very... Oh. 
She came to Canada. I'm five foot three, <laughs> just like him. So maybe. You know, but um, no, but yeah, no, he's very popular. And then Deadpool got popular. I'm I'm waiting for someone else to get popular. Me too. You know, I although maybe it, maybe after the movie it'll be Cable. No. 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 I mean, they're gonna, push, they're gonna push Ms. Marvel. They've been pushing Ms. Marvel, or not Ms. Marvel. Super uh, Captain, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Although uh, they push Ms. Marvel. I don't too, think it's gonna know. happen. No, it's not gonna happen. It's it's like you know, know. It, has to, it has to happen organically. I will tell you if Boulder is Russell in Deadpool two. Gonna tie it back to super connectivity, which I didn't get to talk about uh, last week because that, that is my hopeful theory. Because I really, hey, that's a short fat kid. He could be Boulder. Um, Phil, Phil has to go pro roof on something. <laughs> then Boulder could be that next organic cure, but it has to be organic. Okay, Phil, give us some social medias or Lilith if you'd like. Well, uh, if you want to talk it's to the Capes and you. Lunatics about anything, uh, how about you email us, Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Facebook.com slash Capes and Lunatics at Capes Lunatics on Twitter uh, and the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Keep your eye out for Wade's World episode 50 for our movie review with our friends. Oh, and- Lord. Brace yourself. We'll both will be there for that one. Yeah. Yes. You can write to me in that old fashioned email way. You can always do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter. This is Life Agents of Shield and anything else I feel like at Charlie S. That's C H A R L A E T E S S C R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. Lilith, take it away. All right, guys. Uh, if you're live tweeting any of the Arrowverse stuff finales, follow me at Lil Hellfire. I want to live tweet with you. And. My new project, if you love Superman, then you should probably follow at Save Me uh, Podcast on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook as well, at Save Me Podcast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's not even going to be on the Southgate Media Group. So if you like (gasps) Superman and you like swearing, check out this podcast. Lilith is breaking out on her own. My girls aren't growing up. No, she just has ambition. Unlike me. What's that? All right, everyone. For another week, this has been episode 52 of The Capes. And The Lunatics. Ah, Lunatics. I just really like swearing. That's all. Like, I like. Who doesn't? I, I swear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I need that outlet, okay? I don't swear, but I do like to hear other people swear. Oh, you don't swear. <laughs> uh, not very much. I mostly use men's totes. That's why my kids say fudge on a cracker all the time. Because that's that's like the hardest stuff they hear me say. Every so often I will swear, but not often. Oh, if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets canceled, you'll be swearing. It's got one more season at least. Nah, don't worry. They're not canceling it. <laughs>